So here we are hunting elk right where you want to be in Utah. So Lange, unusual to him, punches his tag on the first day. We're thinking this is going to be an awesome week. Like we may get four or five bulls. So we're here in the Wasatch Range in central Utah, one of the best places that I've been to to hunt elk. And once again, just peak prime time heat of the rut. This trip to Utah always lines up perfectly in the elk season. It seems like we time it where they're just really starting to get into bugling and starting to gather their harems up. So it is just after first light, we get this bull just screaming. You can tell that not only is he interested, but he's coming in a hurry. I catch a lot of grief for waiting to the last day and that's not happening this year. If we get an opportunity opening morning, I am not passing up on it. We got this bull down here. Struck him up a pretty good ways out. He's coming pretty hard. He's down here. I just hope he doesn't swing down. The wind's kind of, I mean, we haven't gotten a good look at him yet, but first morning we got one doing just what we want. So I'm not too worried about him being the biggest. Here he comes. I got him. Here he comes. That you freaking do it first morning, first hour, first hour, first freaking hour. Oh man.
So Lange, unusual to him, punches his tag on the first day. I heard it hit him. I didn't hear you shoot, though. Yeah. Oh, it whacked him. <laughs> that was insane. How far? Probably 30, well, at one point, we're tucked in here, and he came up out of the bottom right there at eight yards. Oh, dude. That was, he that was bolted. Crazy. He bolted, and Ryan kept cow calling. He ran out here and stopped, like, just out there, probably 35, 40. Kind of went quiet right here, just kind of, where are you, where are you? Well, it's because he was looking at us. Close. I said, he must be close because he shut up. Dude. <laughs> 10 o'clock pancakes? <laughs> Why would we want to wait so long? <laughs> oh man, what a bull. Well, we've pushed it to the last afternoon here before, down to the wire, and I think the challenge that Grant issued was not to be afraid to do a little opening morning work. And Lincoln and Ryan were pretty confident this morning. And boy, they called this sucker from a long way. And he came in. I mean, he was coming in hot. Got a, he did a great job getting him to turn back around. He came in real, real close. We had him at about eight yards. Knew he was going to flare, but they were cow calling behind us. And he stopped back long enough to give another look and got one in him. Now that I've punched my tag on the first morning, I'm not really sure what to do with myself. But I tell you what, this view from the catbird seat, mighty fine. Use your hands. Thank you, big old bite. It's amazing. Yeah. Is that the best thing you've ever put in your mouth? Uh, top five for sure. I, I don't like <laughs> to be able to cut it. They're all looking for horns. I'm just looking for this. Don't worry, Johnny. It's only out here. Is it that bad? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, first things first, Langerhands killed the elk, so we need that. Uh, we took one back strap and some tender lunch, which I'll bring out later once everybody's full, and uh, that's what I'm eating. Um, beat it out real good, soak it in buttermilk, a little Worcestershire sauce, and um, for a day, you can go three days on that, and then um, pull it out, roll it in flour, and just pan fry it. Throw it out there. These boys like it. It's good stuff. Thanks, Willie. You're the man. Did you get that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody go grab that. Hopefully by the end of the evening, we'll have at least a couple more bulls down. Lane, he's got his first morning. Totally uncharacteristic of him. So sure we got a special guest. He's cuddly. He's warm. He's fuzzy. But he reminds me of an MMA fighter. Jason Worth is in camp with us this week, and I got to know Jason playing against him quite a bit. He was one of my teammates in, uh, with the Dodgers, and then obviously played with, uh, with Rochi in Washington. And I always told Jason, hey, as soon as you retire, I'm taking you on your first elk hunt. Uh, he's an avid hunter loves whitetail hunting and had never chased elk. Hey, a week of this, oh. you're in shape for the year. How high are we? It's 35,000. Feels like it. Literally the day after he retired, uh, I got a text message that said, hey, where are we going? And we were able to set this one up and get Jason out there to be a part of it. I heard Cobble saw one, but Rochi said never on the first day do you shoot a, a bull like that, so we moved on. And I, then I heard later he's blaming me, so it starts. So after Lange killed on the first day, we're thinking this is going to be an awesome week. Like we may get four or five bulls. And it was just, we just had some misfortune. And 
that's bow hunting. So get into the last day, and I think everybody was wanting, you know, Jason and Tombo specifically to kill since they never they never killed an elk with a bow. Did you sleep there last night? Where's Tombo hunting? You going to sleep on? I'm taking you in the boat. Got three bulls answering. All callable, very cool, very, fairly close. So here we are, hunting elk, September, peak of the rut, right where you want to be in Utah. He's bleeding good. That's a good hit, right? comes up in your face, gives you a 30 yard broadside shot, and you think you'd nail it, only to find out hours and hours up until dark later that you didn't quite make the shot. I mean, I did make the shot, it just didn't, just didn't hit its mark the way you would want it to. I feel so bad for Tombo. Um, everything looked to be lining up perfect. The shot looks good, but I think he just tried to get a little bit too fine and get a little too close to that shoulder. It was real close to being a heart shot. That's part of the, the heartache of bow hunting and, and also what keeps us coming back. Oh. 
Yeah. Jump shot. Enter Willie Robertson to the elk hunting world. Willie figured out after a day of spot and stalk that sitting over a water hole is an option. That became the only option after that. We all know that. care about is I got my release. His arrows. My arrows. My bow. I have a knife. Binoculars and a rangefinder. Let's go. So we go into the last day and Jason was sweating it. I know I was in hopes that he would get a bull. He runs into a perfect opportunity and makes it count. All right, well, first elk hunt, 7th Heaven Ranch, Utah. Last day, about, about 20 minutes left. We didn't think it was gonna happen. He came hammering down the mountain, let out a bu big bugle at the watering hole, about 30 yards away. I'm, stu I'm still freaking, I'm still freaking out, but. You know, I think I can answer for Jason here that what, whatever he's done in his baseball career, nothing compares to being face to face with an elk, especially after, you know, years of waiting for this moment to get out and chase elk in the mountains. Yeah, I just want to thank the Buck Commander crew for having me. Um, been a long time coming, wanting to do an elk hunt for a long time, and something me and Adam dreamed up a long time ago when we played together. And uh, it's been a great week, great guides. Great hospitality. Langy uh, got one early in the week, and guys have been having great hunts and getting close, but um, just glad we got it done here at the, uh, the 11th hour. Woo! Oh, man. Oh, I had like 10 minutes left. I had plenty of time. <laughs> it's just such a treat to be invited back up to 7th Heaven with the Fentons and at the same time supporting an awesome cause with the Unique Foundation.